What are the five ingredients in your basket? Fresh chorizo, fresh prawns, pepper, corn, and beef stock. I'm feeling ecstatic about these five ingredients. Taya. Corn on the cob, red onion, limes, jalapeno, and fresh halibut. I know these flavors, and I know I can cook them really well. Sounds like you have something very special planned. It also sounds a little bit too easy. Of course you can make something great with your own ingredients. The question is, what can you do with someone else's? Miranda, your advantage for winning the salmon challenge is that you get to switch all the baskets. <laughs> you can keep your own ingredients if you wish, but you get to decide whose ingredients everyone else gets to work with. Hey. <laughs> this is nuts. I had a great idea, I wanted to execute it, and now I don't get to. Okay, Miranda. Thank you. I want these home cooks to feel completely outside of their comfort zone, like I have the entire time. Tatea, I get May's basket. It has shrimp in it. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm allergic. I've never shelled one. I haven't even touched one. I'm giving Barry Taya's basket. I think he wants to make a sauce, and there really isn't anything in her basket to make a sauce. The first thing I see is halibut and corn. Whatever Taya was thinking with this, I can't figure it out. I'm not happy about it. Give you this weird, super loaded basket. Barry's got beef broth, pork chorizo, and some seafood. I know that I can work with this. This is your new basket. Trevor has Parmesan, flour, eggs, tomatoes, and garlic. He has four out of the five ingredients I chose, so I'm very, very happy. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. I'm deciding to keep my basket because this is my advantage, and I want to work with some ingredients that I actually know. Barry, Barry, Chef. Barry, you look irritated. Did Miranda, you know, poke at the bear? Just tell me. A little bit. How are you going to use that to your advantage? I'm going to just channel a little bit of being pissed off and focus on what do I need to do with a rather sparse basket. OK, so what are you doing? Today, I am making pan-roasted halibut served on corn pudding and a corn salsa. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Is this the thing I have to devein? Giving Taya the shellfish was an honest mistake. I didn't mean to play on Taya's allergy, and I feel a little bad. Is there two lines on top and bottom? So I decide to show Taya how to devein a shrimp. The main thing is, is in the, the back. And it, you just cut it? Yeah, it's out. It's out. OK, thank you. 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes left. That's actually pretty good. Look at Miranda, look at her. She, she's absolutely in her element. She obviously has the big advantage here. Her ingredients did not change. My mom influences my cooking, so I know how to make really good flank steak. I have way more confidence than I ever have before. She's going to blow through this quite easily. Green runs this way, cut against the green. Miranda's already sliced her flank steak. It looks a bit on the rare side. The first few pieces are still looking slightly rare, but I think overcooking it would be worse than undercooking it. I hope she's cut it against the grain. Miranda, please bring up your dish. I made a lime and pepper grilled flank steak with a red pepper sauce over top of a grilled corn salad. You know, you had less of a disadvantage. You got to keep your ingredients. Every time I've had to cook in this kitchen, I've been the one that's been out of my element. Have you ever worked with flank steak before? A couple times. What color were you going for? A medium rare. What do you think you achieved? I think I achieved a rare. Closer to blue. There's another problem here. You cut the flank steak with the grain. I thought I cut it against the grain. I saw it running this way. You cut with the grain. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've made in this kitchen. I'm in trouble. It does take effort. This is tough. On the other hand, the corn's actually Quite delicious, nice pop. What happened to you in this challenge? I thought I was doing good, Chef, and I honestly thought I cut it against the grain. You've come so far. You've done amazing things, but this meat is a mistake. You cut it incorrectly, you undercooked it. 
I hope you'll have a chance to recover from something like this. I came up with a pan-roasted halibut with a red onion, jalapeno, and lime jam, corn jalapeno pudding, and a roasted corn salsa. How do you feel you did with those ingredients? 10 out of 10. That's pretty confident. Yes, chef. <laughs> it forced me to do something I had never done before and techniques I've never used before. Let's have a taste. I think your corn salsa here is light, crisp, has that lime to it, fresh, big flavors. Halibut, I think, is cooked very, very well. The corn sauce, for me, could do with a little bit more seasoning. You just need to bring that sweetness out. Sure. Overall, I think it's a pretty good dish, and it's really great to see you being forced to use something different. Thank you, Chef. The anger that fueled me through this cook woke up a part of my brain, and I'm going to make sure to keep it awake. I'm not the uh, strong cake guy, but I'm going to make a chocolate cake with peanut butter, my son's JJ's favorite two ingredients. Perfect. David, you're sweating. I sweat. I put this pressure on myself. It's my son's birthday today. Wow. So there's two of you with, uh, with birthdays today. It's amazing. Excellent. So you're making a peanut butter cake? Peanut butter and chocolate. Standard vanilla icing. Cover the whole thing with pretzels. My favorite part is dipping in the uh, batter. Yeah, it's the best part of the cake, uh, isn't it? That tastes good already. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Ten minutes! We are low on time. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. My internal temperature is just roaring. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, my god. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. I've burnt the peanuts. I have to push forward. I'm not failing on this challenge for JJ. You know, David's cake looks absolutely amazing. He handles that spatula like a pro. Well, it's very similar to concrete. It is like troweling. My secret weapon is the fact that I am a talented concrete guy. The chocolate birthday cake, Philadelphia cream cheese peanut butter uh, layers, and then I covered the whole thing with pretzels and the roasted peanuts. It's my little boy's birthday today, so I put everything into it. It's really hard to get a cake that perfect. Rigid, smooth construction. You got the peanut butter, you got the cream cheese, all these comfort things that your son loves. This cake is about love. Thank you. Beautifully cooked sponge, enough sweetness, a little saltiness from the peanut and pretzels. In fact, that flavor is, is quite sophisticated. You can't go wrong with peanut butter. Top marks all around for a stunning cake. But when it comes to spelling? Yeah, I'm not known for my spelling. I think that says hap. It made us all very hap. <laughs> the judges and Matthew walk in holding cocktails. Were they having a party in the pantry? I have no idea what's going on. Everyone? Please join us up in the front. Matthew's really going to make this tough. Don't be falling for that super cute smile of his. He is fierce. Who will you assign the pina colada to? A home cook that does not work with tropical flavors that often, they're going to have a hard time with a pina colada. I'm going to give this pina colada to April Lee. The key flavors are coconut, pineapple, and rum. Have you ever tasted a pina colada before? I sure have on tropical vacations, but the Master Chef Canada Kitchen is no vacation. Matthew, the Irish coffee. Who are you going to give that to? I'm not quite sure if they even like coffee. Being Filipino myself, I know that we don't cook with coffee that much. This one I am going to give to Jeremy. Jeremy, how do you feel about cooking with whiskey, coffee, and cream? I'm not sure what I would pair coffee with or how to use it at all, so I'm racking my brain right now. Next up, the Bloody Mary. Who's going to get that one? Making tomatoes and hot peppers the star of a dessert is going to be the toughest challenge here today. 
So I'm gonna give this one to someone who I see as one of my biggest competitions. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving the Bloody Mary to Mary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good fake out. I'm not as excited as I look right now. I'm trying to get in Matthew's head because I need to show Matthew that I can handle this. It's obvious who has some mint julep. This one might be the toughest one for both savory and sweet. I do not know very many dishes I can cook with bourbon, sugar, and mint. Have you ever tasted a mint julep? I don't drink, so any drink would be hard for me. The challenge is driving me to drink. Inspiration. <laughs> Nobody likes what I gave them, and in this stage of the competition, that is great. I just need to focus. There's no room for mistakes. Veronica has just discovered a major problem with her Japanese egg custard. Yeah, it's overcooked. I can do one more. I can do it again. You can do it again? I can do it one more time. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Seeing Veronica struggle is very, very rare. That chamushi, I tried to do it with science. It didn't work for me. There's no time to measure. I just have to trust my gut. There's only 20 minutes left, and I have to pull off the impossible. I got to tell you, in terms of strategy, Matthew has hit two bullseyes. He has put Veronica into extreme pressure, and I've never seen Mary this stressed out. Uh, where's that nutmeg? She is definitely struggling right now. Woo! Sorry, medic. I seldom see her injure herself. The stakes are insanely high. I've never had this much pressure, but the voice in my head is just saying, make sure that these flavors are perfect. Hi there, Jeremy. Hi, Chef. How are your two dishes going? Going pretty good so far. I pretty much got my dessert done. If I were you, I would be thinking about how I could be very creative yeah. to present that, but in a really modern, out-of-the-box thinking. I know, Chef, I know I've been struggling with plating, so that's been what's been going through my head the whole time I've been cooking. As it stands right now, it just looks like brown starch. I know, Chef. I'm kind of nervous. OK, pull the rabbit out of the hat. Good luck with it, Jeremy. Thank you. I'm kind of thinking that I may have made a mistake right now because there's really no way to make my dessert look pretty. working on getting everything done for my coconut tart. You have 10 more minutes left. I look up at the clock and realize right away that my pastry cream has been in the blast freezer for a good 35 to 40 minutes. <gasps> Shoot. My pastry cream is almost completely frozen. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, hands up! Incredible. Nicely done, everyone. Incredible. That was amazing. Oh, I like pina coladas. The Bloody Mary is delicious, and it's calming my nerves. <gasps> I spent so much time on that dessert. I wish I had more time to plate my beef tataki. That doesn't look like a good plate. I'm pretty worried. I don't love the way my dessert looks. It's turning into a puddle on the plate, and it's not going to look pretty at all. This is not good enough. I'm just, I'm full of regrets. My savory dish is a rum marinated pork taco with a tropical salsa, finished with a flambéed and rum grilled pineapple slice. And my sweet dish is a pina colada semifredo with a coconut crumble and a rum sauce. What do you think went wrong with this dessert here? I had to come up with another plan and think really quick and think like a chef. It's just tough. Well, let's give this a taste. Hmm. You know what, April? It tastes like a really great tropical ice cream. Great big punchy flavors. The rum, the coconut, the pineapple, that's all coming through. The only problem is, is that you can't serve a dish like this the way it looks. Don't forget, there's other cooks behind you that may have dishes that look nicer than yours, but the taste may not be there. So for my savory, I did a Bloody Mary puttanesca. For the sweet, I did a tomato and plum tart with a spicy creme anglaise. Let's cut to the chase. Matthew assigned you the Bloody Mary mm -hmm. for one reason. He wants me to go home. He wants you out of here, fast. Mm -hmm. 
This is the Mary we've come to know and respect. This Putaneska, on the other hand, looks like someone's getting lazy. I know I worked hard, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. It all comes down to the plate. It is a beef tataki with a bourbon ponzu sauce and a zucchini noodle with a mint sauce. And a mint tea chawamushi with a bourbon and sugar syrup. Let's see how it all comes together. It is fresh. The ponzu is there. The bourbon is, is lacking, in my opinion. The mint has a subtlety to it, but the presentation sadly weighs it down. Japanese cuisine has a clean, zen-like approach to it. I can think of 10 ways I could have played it this one better. Shame you didn't pick one of those 10 ways today. You can taste the bourbon and the syrup, of course. Mint, cream, not your best. Yeah. I think I would have made it stronger. I would have added a bit more sugar to this. But let me ask you, do you think this is good enough to take you to the top four? Absolutely. I wish I was as confident as you. Maybe I need to rethink how I put a plate together and how all the flavors and textures work together. Jeremy, please bring your dishes up to the podium. This dish is a coffee and togarashi beef with a steak au poivre sauce made with the whiskey and cream. And this dish is a coffee chocolate rice pudding with whiskey candied bacon. I have to say, it doesn't look that appetizing on the plate. Yeah. Surprisingly delicious. Thank you, chef. I'm getting that sweet brown sugar. The coffee is, is working nicely with the chocolate, and it works really, really well with this rice. Had you plated it a little bit more elevated, it would have added so much more to the pleasure of enjoyment. Okay. But a bullseye on the use of those three key ingredients. Nicely done. To find out which dish will be your new creation, look to the bottom of your coaster. I knew it. Jen, what did the bottom of your coaster say? I got the veal. Andre. It's gonna be chicken. And that means, Andy, you'll be cooking eggplant. 30 minutes! You only have 30 minutes left! The time is just flying by. Okay, it's gonna be tight. Yeah. It's looking good. Oh, oh, stop the clock! What happened? We know you're hard at work on your second course. But come on, guys. Who's ever heard of an Italian meal with only two courses? Oh, please don't do it. Don't do it. That's why we're adding one more. A contorno. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? OK. Oh, god. It's just like, what? I have no clue what to do with this. A contorno is a vegetable or salad side dish. You can make anything you want, but it has to pair well with your secondi. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, let's do it. Your time starts now! Okay. Oh, guys, oh, guys, you really Wait. gotta hustle. Oh, it. let's go take a look. In only 30 minutes left, they now have two dishes. One they have to start from scratch, and the other one they need to get finished all on time. Oh my good God! When you get a curveball, you are in a crisis. Don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate things. Just stay calm. Trust it, trust it, trust it, trust it. You know, in seven seasons, we have seen that adversity brings the best out in most cooks we see. Ooh. Five minutes, only five more minutes. Get it going. Remember, two plates, not one. Behind. Keep going, guys. Keep, Keep going. going. Good, good job, guys. Awesome. Ooh. Oh, that's crispy. My chicken is looking good. Ooh. Stress and meal. Try not to overcook that. Uh, they are good, I think. Okay, where's my salt? This is the messiest cook I ever did. I just have to keep on putting one foot in front of the other and see what comes out. One minute! One more minute left! Come on! One more minute! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 
I love both the dishes. If this is the end of uh, Master Chef for me, I'm proud of these dishes. It's all quite emotional. What comes out of you in these moments? There's just one more ingredient on your station a mini mystery box for you to open. One, two, three, open. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> Nothing says the future food like crickets. What on earth am I gonna do with this? I've caught some as a kid, but I've never eaten one in my life. They're rich in protein, healthy fats, minerals, and fiber. Plus, they're everywhere. All of these ingredients are so interesting. These are not ingredients you're gonna find in most people's grocery carts. These are a little bit unusual, and they do take a tremendous amount of skill and understanding in order to master them. And it takes a very important word, creativity. Very interesting. I don't even know if you can eat it. I don't even know like what half these ingredients are. Okay, so maybe we're gonna scratch that idea. Chef Claudio. Christopher, so what's your dish? I'm doing a variety of mushrooms. I've got some morels here that I just braised. I've got some mushrooms confiting in the oven. I'll also be frying a little bit of enoki, so it's almost like a mushroom garden. And then I'm gonna plate my fried bugs on it. So it's almost like they're walking down a garden. The judges want to see how well we can use the theme of the challenge today. And I know I wanna make crickets the star of my dish. So I'm trying to recreate a moment from my childhood when I was on recess, and I would be trying to catch these crickets with my friends. But unfortunately, I sort of just did a forest-themed dessert last week, and I don't want the judges thinking that I'm just a one-trick pony. But I'm going to take the risk anyways, because I really think this is a great way to show off the cricket. All right, I'll leave you to it. Thank you, chef. Stop! Stop! Stop the cook! What is going on? Why are we stopping the clock? We're in the middle of a cook. Here comes the twist. What are you going to add to this challenge now? Lord knows what it's going to be this time. None of the challenges are going to be easy or straightforward. There's going to be a twist. Oh my god, I can't have another mystery box within a mystery box. Come on up here and grab a box. This is insane. We have so many other ingredients, I don't know what they're gonna throw at us. Open your boxes now! Okay. Yes! What the is this? We have four more ingredients for you. Okay. Your choices are Callus caviar, a sustainable codro spread, Sinap Grove, organic whole grain mustard, Chocolate Mork, sustainable dark chocolate. Silt Lingon, organic lingonberry preserves. You must incorporate at least one of them into your dish. None of these ingredients really make any sense with my dish. Last season, I would have been panicking. This season, it's just like, OK, I'll figure it out. Like, let's just go. You can get back to cooking now! Immediately, I choose the grainy mustard because I know it will work perfectly with my pickling liquid. I have my salmon ready to go. I'm gonna use the cod caviar. It has a nice, strong cod flavor, and I'm gonna put that into my curry and really hit it out of the park with it. Oh, it's a pretty big curveball. I'm gonna be incorporating the mustard and roe into my puree today. It's not easy to suddenly work ingredients into a plan that you came up already, and given that we've got 30 minutes left, I really gotta hustle. <laughs> Just trying to like temper the chocolate so it doesn't melt all over the place. I just took it off and I'm gonna add a little bit more chocolate and once it stops melting, then that means it's tempered and then I can add my crickets in. Tempering chocolate is a huge time waster. You have to pay attention to it and I'm getting behind on all my other components. Am I gonna have enough time? I don't know, but I don't want to play it safe, so this is what I gotta do. Taya is using the chocolate mork to cover her crickets. That's risky. If it pays off, though, it's going to be delicious. We're making some chocolate crickets. At least they're dead now. I did a pan-seared salmon, 
tempered squash blossoms, some puffed wild rice, sweet potato puree, and I dipped the crickets in the chocolate. It's kind of like the mud in a forest. You know, you've got little bugs in the mud. I think this plate looks terrific. It's certainly restaurant quality plating. It looks inviting. It looks colorful. And what was the cook you're hoping for on this beautiful piece of salmon? I'm hoping for a medium rare. Is that what I'm going to see here, Taya? I sure hope so. Well, let's see. If I overcooked the salmon, I'm basically buying my one-way ticket out this door. Look at that. That is as close to medium rare as I think you could have gotten it. That salmon tastes as if it was just pulled out of the ocean. It is so fresh, so clean, and so natural. That sweet potato sauce, it makes the perfect backfoil for a salmon dish like this because it adds that next layer of sort of creamy mouthfeel. It's a cook that shows incredible promise. Thank you. I've never had chocolate-covered crickets on salmon. I would never combine chocolate and salmon, but I'm glad you did. It's a really great balance. It's unexpected. The one thing I have to comment on is the fish, I believe, is under-seasoned. It could use a little more sea salt. Definitely not perfect, but bold. Thank you. I really need to win one, or like get top three or something. I'm hoping that this dish will do that. I was inspired by the cricket. The puree on the bottom is a spring onion and pea puree. On top, you have a medley of mushrooms. We have braised morels, confit chanterelles, and fried enoki. Great plating. Thank you, chef. It's playful, but it also is reminiscent of your last dessert presentation. The flavors are very bold. The wonderful savory pea, the little spring onion. There is something in there that has a real umami hit to it. It might be the morel soil. Ah, OK. And how did you make that? Olive oil, morels, flour, and ground cricket to bring some nuttiness. It is a beautiful presented dish, lots of great flavors, incredible technique. And I hope that you are able to continue to create exciting food like this for us on an ongoing basis. Thank you, chef. Sabrina, as a runner-up, you're the other team captain. Yes, Chef. I lost the last team challenge. I'm so happy to not be team captain today because I just have to worry about feeding these students. This challenge is going to work a little different. That's because today, there will be three teams. Wowzers. And the person who has the advantage of choosing who that captain will be is... David. Wow. <laughs> David has another advantage. I like to compete, and I'm going to compete against another French Canadian, Lynn. I am not in the mindset at all to be a team captain today. This is going to be hilarious. Lynn, a captain again? She already had one meltdown. I think it's a good pick by David. The three poutine stands have been assigned a different color, red, blue, and green. Each one is equipped with its own specialty pantry that features a different top quality protein. For the red stand, it's pork. For the blue stand, it's beef. And for the green stand, it's chicken. And you, David, have the advantage of getting to decide which team works with which protein. Whoa. So David, which color pantry do you choose? I love pork, so I'm gonna go with pork for myself. Pork is definitely my product. I grow two pigs a year, and we process them right from beginning to end, make sausages, do everything. David, which protein have you decided Sabrina will be cooking with? I choose beef. I have to work with beef, which I'm pretty excited, because chicken is boring. Lynn, that means you'll be the leader of the green team, and you'll be cooking with chicken. That's the ingredient that I wanted to work with, but David doesn't know that. He's actually setting me up for success right now. It's now time to start choosing your teams. I want to avoid Lynn's team, like the plague. I do not want to be on there when she's freaking out, waving her knife at bees. David, you get first pick. My first choice is Fast in the Kitchen, Andrew. Thanks, buddy. Sabrina, who's your first pick? Considering I'm working with beef, John, come on. Yeah! I look good in blue. Lynn, who's your first pick? 
probably nobody wants to be on my team because I lost last time. My first pick was my second in command at my last challenge, Tammy. I think this time around, Lynn is going to let go of the reins, and she's going to allow other cooks to do what they're good at. And I know we're going to kill it. Christopher. Cody, come on. Woo! All right, Cody! I'm choosing Kristen. So, David, who's your third and final pick? I'm just praying I don't get picked last. I was a cool kid in high school, never got picked last, can't start now. I pick Michael. Woo! Guaranteed. I'm getting picked last again. Quasi, Jennifer, you're the bottom two again. Why do you think that is, Jennifer? Welcome to high school. When it came down to the social game of high school, I really struggled with that, because I felt like I was bullied a lot. Quasi, why do you think you're standing here? My fellow home cooks, they don't really know my cooking style. I have yet to, to blossom in this competition. So Sabrina, who do you choose? The last time I worked with Jennifer, she was an emotional wreck. I'm gonna take on Quasi and let Lynn take Jen like she did last time. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> yeah, buddy. I am so happy I am not on Sabrina's team. If there is one person in this competition that really makes me feel like I'm back in high school, it's Sabrina. I only had to say one word. Fake it! I am the biggest hustler when it comes to this. I know Michael is a smooth talker and Cody is all looks. Hooray for the underdog! I need to distract from them and Cody's good looks and charm. Do you want your food to taste good or do you want it to look good? We said bacon and they went crazy! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's make one up. I'll make them taste it. Tammy makes a beautiful dish of butter chicken, puts in, and Jennifer brings it in the crowd, and she's making people smell, telling them to go to the green booth. If you're eating them with your friends, calories don't count! <laughs> Jennifer's big mouth is actually gonna help us help puts in. Bodacious butter chicken! Let's hear it! Bodacious butter chicken! Jennifer's contribution is actually helping, not hindering like I thought. Woo! Who would have thought? Everybody hungry? That's good. Oh, that's good. You got all the flavor you need in that. 30 seconds! Dump her in. It's 30 seconds! We gotta have a crowd coming for poutine! Okay, ladies, everybody bring the heat. But we need more gravy. This is not gonna be enough. This one's ready. Students of Guelph, choose your poutine! Come and get it! Oh, oh, Lord have mercy. We need fries, people! Here we go. The students of Guelph University will now choose between the red team's Japanese-inspired poutine with bacon, nori, and miso gravy, the blue team's Philly cheesesteak poutine topped with deep-fried jalapenos, and the green team's butter chicken poutine with fresh cilantro yogurt and mango slaw. The team that sells the most orders will win this challenge. So check this out. This is the big, dirty steak poutine. Who's getting the first one? Ladies first? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. The forks are right here and the napkins are right here. How do you like it? That's delicious. Yeah, man. Yeah. We got bacon, baby. Bacon sells. Everyone loves bacon. Yeah, I love butter chicken. It reminds me of India. Hope you enjoy. It's worth the wait over here. This is the best gravy I've ever tasted in my life. I see the red and blue team's lines, and they're endless. I look over to the green line, and there's like 15 people in there. It's like a two-man race. You got nobody. <laughs> oh, no. Good pick on team captain for Lynn. <laughs> I can overhear the other teams talking that our lineup is very short. What they don't realize is we've already fed them, and those people are coming back for more. Yeah, yeah, by the time that I got my second one from the green team, they got She's their still, first. I was still, still in line. line. Yeah. Wow, it's a very short line. Is this your second plate? Yeah, it's delicious. It's incredible. The green team has sold so many orders that they've run out of chicken. Is this all you have left? Yes, we're selling out, Chef. Wow. We're running out of butter chicken, but Tammy decides to make another batch, and she does it in world record speed. Like, I've never seen anybody go boom, 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 and make a butter chicken that fast in the kitchen. There we go. Tammy saves the day. Yeah! My team won. The ladies won. We won. Yes. The green team wins. I don't understand what's going on. Is that the right color? 
It is so awesome to kick everyone else's ass. The feeling is I want to put it in a jar and keep it forever. In the pantry, you all chose the ingredients that you need to make your dishes truly sing. Now, we want you to leave those ingredients behind. Oh, jeez. As you each move to the station in front of you. Oh, my god. Really? Ah! I had a game plan. I was going to win this challenge. It's mind-blowing. I'm hoping whoever I'm switching with has something half-decent in there. Today, you'll be cooking with another home cook's chosen ingredients. I am very deflated. I had such a great idea. Michael, there's a beer in the basket. Yeah, I wanted to drink it. What the hell, Jennifer? Cheese and fish. Sabrina's got the weirdest assortment here. She has, like, no seasonings besides salt and then stuff I've never even heard of. She got a Christmas present early. Sabrina's basket is pretentious. A great chef can make beautiful things happen with whatever ingredients they find at their fingertips. And we want to see you do exactly that today. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef! Your 45 minutes starts now! I hate you, Lynn. You have the nicest, nicest basket. What? You have like 150 sticks of butter, man. I'm French. I am going to take all of the fatty, milky, buttery products that Lynn left me and throw them out. I see Christopher's basket and I see dried Mexican peppers, maple syrup. I have no clue what this kid was gonna make. This challenge is all about adapting. If you do not adapt, you get wiped out. I'm working with Tammy's basket. I don't know where she was going with all this dairy and seafood. From where I'm from, we don't do that. There's corn in there, some butter, there's hot peppers. I'm making chowder. I really have to get that broth going and lay on those flavors. This is Michael's basket. I've decided to make a snail paella. It has chorizo in it, tomatoes, and it's seafood. Just gotta trust my intuition, make a beautiful dish, and not go home today. Michael. Hello, chef, how are you? I'm well, thanks, how about you? I'm a little frazzled. At first, I was, my trouble was that I was looking at the, the ingredients as if I was lit. And that's impossible. Tell me what it is that you're gonna cook. I'm gonna do a nice, fresh conch ceviche. Now, have you worked with conch before? <laughs> Never. Well, I'll let you carry on. Thank you so Best much. Luck. Thanks, Thank Michael. you. I am really proud to show this dish. It has a novelty aspect to it, but it looks cool. What you have here is a ceviche, and in front of it is deep fried mushrooms. When I think of conch, I think of me and my mother just walking on the beach when I was a kid looking for shells. So what it resembles is a shell that washes ashore, lets go of some ceviche, and the mushrooms would be the beach, as in the sand. OK, well, let's try this. I know a lot about ceviche. I'm from South America. I've made so many different types. This, I think, is genius, that you're using the vessel just to keep your ceviche in. I think that's interesting. It smells fresh. It smells like the ocean, actually. Mm. And it's tender, which is very difficult to achieve. It's a great job. Thank you. The ceviche with the little bit of heat, a little bit of acid, you didn't overpower it, which is very important. I'm very impressed. Thank you, Chef. It is snail paella, so there's tomato, coriander, my diced some bell peppers in there, and I just finished it with the diced conches and the periwinkles at the very end because I didn't want to overcook them. You had to get inside Michael's head to create this particular dish. How was that? I realized that sometimes you just have to rely on your sense and your intuition and just taste your way through it. And if you believe it's delicious, then you'll make a delicious dish. That is big and bold and flavorful. I get a touch of heat. There's a twinkle of that seafood, the sweetness of it. Really very, very well done. Thank you, chef. This is a paella that I can eat over and over and over again. You had Michael's box. Yes, chef. I mean, he laid 
the blueprint for this dish. I think you may have to thank Michael <laughs> by buying him a beer. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Chef.